Good afternoon, Noel. How would you like to hear some deep holes? Well, I'd like to hear these deep holes, so I've created this. It's the sort of Frankenvoder. Down here on these proto boards, I've got 12 bandpass filters. There's some other stuff on here, but it's not completed and it's not in use. And I've also got my output mixer board uh, for the front panel vocoder. The front panel is attached to this piece of wood. And I've also got my microphone input amplifier so that I can get my microphone signal up to line level. So what are these deep holes? Well, take a look at this uh, paragraph here, holy responses. In the synthesis section, there is a filter bank identical to that of the analysis section. The outputs are summed to produce the output signal. Alternate channel outputs are inverted since there is a change in phase as a signal is swept through the resonant frequency of the filter. Therefore, at the midpoints between adjacent bands, phase cancellation will occur, producing deep holes in the overall frequency response. So those are the deep holes. This uh, diagram from the same vocoder article shows the 12 bandpass filters and their frequency responses. There's also um, a low pass and a high pass filter, but um, I've not actually built those on these proto boards yet. So the issue here is really that a bandpass filter, as well as attenuating frequencies that fall outside of the frequency band, so fr frequencies below uh, the center point frequency and frequencies above that, they also produce a phase change. So at the center frequency of one of the filters, we'll go with, actually let's go with filter seven because that's centered on one kilohertz. It's nice and simple. You will have no phase change. So I'm using this pen to indicate uh, zero degrees phase change. As we move up towards um, the upper frequency, now I don't know whether the phase change is uh, positive or negative, but let's call it positive as we go above the band uh, range, then the phase of the signal is going to change. And at a certain point, and I don't know where it is, the phase would have gone to plus 90 degrees. Similarly, if we go below the center frequency, the phase of the signal will turn towards minus 90 degrees. So if we have a signal that sits between two bandpass filters, um, on say band seven for filter seven, it might go to plus 90 degrees. The same signal through filter eight might go to minus 90 degrees. Now, of course, when the same signal is plus 90 degrees and minus 90 degrees, if you add the outputs of these two filters together, and that's what I've done with these bus bars, I've added the outputs of all the filters together, you're gonna get a phase cancellation and you're gonna get a total attenuation down to minus infinity dBs. That's the hole that we're looking for here. So that's probably enough theory just for the moment. Let's do some practical stuff. I need to do some wiring. Let's take the output from the input amplifier. That's the microphone preamp. Now I'm gonna take um, the same output twice. These are all paralleled, these three connectors and feed it into my bandpass filters because I've done something a bit weird with the bandpass filters. I've actually split them into two groups, left and right channels. Let's not worry about that too much. Now on the output side, um, the output socket is a full-size jack socket underneath here. So I'm gonna need to uh, take that out in mono, split it into two signals. This is just a splitter. And that then can go to the two uh, left and right channels of my active speaker. Here it is, switch it on. And if I plug this into that output socket, then I've got um, a line into my audio amplifier. I've put the amplifier on the floor so that if there's a loud thumb or buzz, it won't um, destroy your ears. Oh, what's that? No, that's nothing. Let's plug that in there. Okay, now I need to power this up. So I've got this power supply down here, put a 12 volt from my solar system into it, and that'll give me 12012, which, I've which is distributed to all the bandpass filters and also via these 
red, black and yellow cables to my output amp and my input amp. Let's plug that in and see if there's a loud thump. Oh, does my cable not reach? Here we go, plug it in. Hmm, nothing yet. Yes, now there's a very nasty smell of burning and I've identified what it is. It's this tantalum capacitor there. Did I fit that the wrong way around? I'm not sure I've ever tested this board, but it's certainly gone very black. Do you want to see it in close up? And it stinks and it's this one here and it's gone very black, <laughs> sort of black mushroom on there. I wonder if it's just that I put one of those tents in the wrong way around. Oh well, let's plow on. Alternative power supply, which is current limited by its very nature. It's got some very thin wires on here. Let's put that there, plug that into there, plug that into my uh, 12 to 12012 power supply and see whether we get more smoke. Oh, smoke's coming out. That's not good, is it? Let's take that out. That was fine the other day. I don't know why that suddenly decided to go nasty, but I'm going to waggle that backwards and forwards until it snaps off. That blackened outer skin is it's gone very fragile. I'm hoping that I just put one of these caps in the wrong way around. And if I remove it, I don't want to take this board out and completely rework it. It's a lot of work, especially with all these bus bars wired on here. Well, it's really not happy, that one, is it? That's exploded like... I don't know what. Like a mushroom. Well, I think I need another wire. Let's just bring that up to there. Another of the outputs from the microphone amp. Um, I've only got one channel on there, but that shouldn't matter. And I'm going to put that directly into one of the inputs of the output amplifier so that I can just put a microphone straight through to the output. Let's see if that works. Right, this is now working. I've got microphone plugged into the preamp. I can adjust the volume level um, just before feedback. That's being routed through on one of these cables, this one, to the output amplifier, which you can't quite see very well. If I tip the camera, you'll see that. That's there. And that's going out to my amplifier. So what I need to do now is incorporate these filters into this output somehow. Right, so let's explain what's going on here. This is the direct feed from the microphone through to the output. It's not going through any filters, so that sounds uh, fairly flat. Now I'm going to turn that down. So I'm still talking into the microphone. And now I've put onto the input of uh, one of my mixers, I'm going to put first this set of filters the outputs from the filters are going through 22k resistors onto these bus bars. So this is one set of filters. I've got a bit of, got a bit of feedback there, but you can hear that um, those filters, this is the highest frequency filter here, filter 13. So that's those filters. And then if I move this over to the other bus bar, it should sound completely different. Yes, that's a different set of filters. Uh, you can hear that there's really no top end there. Uh, so yeah, so you can hear the effect of the filters. Now if I touch these two bus bars together, this is the sort of virtual ground point, we should be able to get both sets of filters and we can hear that it's, generally speaking, a flatter response. So that's this set of filters and they are alternated. And back to here. That's this set of filters, and again, they're on alternate frequency bands. Now, here's the author's solution to the deep holes. Alternate channels, in fact, the odd numbered channels, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, and 13, go through an inverter. The even numbered channels, with the strange exception of channel 1, which really should be over in this group, not sure why it isn't, go through, uh, well, they don't go through this inverter, but then both of these points go through this inverter. So these odd channels are double inverted. These even channels are single inverted. And that should eliminate the deep holes. Now I've got to try and wire that up. So what I want is 
this bus bar, which is the odd channels, to this set of inputs. And the other bus bar, I'll get another crop clip to the other set of inputs. These are quite difficult to get to, so I'll just wire that up now. Okay, as per this diagram, I've now got um, the odd number channels going to one of these inputs, which will be either the inverting or the non-inverting, doesn't really matter. And the even channels going through my other green wire to the other input. So we should be in a situation now where the deep holes have been eliminated. But I can't really switch quickly between them. So I've put a micro switch on here, this micro switch, and I'm hoping to put some more crop clips on here and wire this up in such a way that I can switch between the deep hole elimination strategy and a strategy where the deep holes are not eliminated. <laughs> See if we can hear the difference. Let's wire it up. Okay, I've wired one of these bus bars to the switch so I can switch it between the two inputs, the non-inverting and the inverting inputs on my output. And the other one I've wired straight into one of these, I can't remember which one, but I'm not really hearing much difference between them. Let me just make a tone. Uh, there is a difference. Let's do some white noise. I suppose I ought to work out which one is deep holes and which one isn't. Let's do that. Right, I've now set this up so that the deep holes are, oh, which one was it? I think they're eliminated when this is normally open. So there are no deep holes there. But if I press the switch, then there are deep holes. So can you hear the difference between this? Is this a fuller sound than this? Yes, it might be. Let's try an R. So this is uh, without deep holes. Uh, uh, well, something certainly seems to disappear when I press the switch. So maybe those are these very deep holes between the bandpass filters cutting away certain frequencies. Let's try noise. When this is normally open, remember that's deep holes eliminated. When I push the switch in to the right, that's got deep holes. Uh, certainly I can hear the difference between them, but whether one is any better than the other, I don't really know. Right, now there's one final thing I can do. Instead of using the microphone, I can use this noise generator that I made the other day. I found yet another audio lead, that's four stereo audio leads. So if I take the output from the noise generator and put it into the line input, then we should get broadband noise. This is sort of full spectrum noise. And I can see whether we can hear the deep holes coming from there. I've got to find a power supply for that. Right, I've powered up the noise generator. So I'm going to raise that to a volume, which I think is probably about right. Can we hear that? I might bring it nearer. Now let's try that. So that's without deep holes. And if I press this switch right over on the left hand side of the screen, yes, now you can hear a difference there. That's a fuller noise sound. Press the switch and certainly some of the frequencies do appear to disappear. Appear to disappear. <laughs> Seem to disappear. So full sound with the alternate channels inverted to eliminate deep holes. And those are the deep holes. So, can you hear deep holes? Yes, I guess you can. Cheerio.